Good evening. It is March 29th, and welcome to Cape Media News, your source for hyperlocal news that matters. I'm Lauren Williamson. At this week's select board meeting in Dennis, a citizen petition was presented to be placed on the town meeting warrant with intentions to repeal the town's ban on the sale of recreational marijuana. However, sparks flew as board members expressed their opposition to the petition, with board member John Terrio even apologizing for his behavior. Here's a quick look at what happened. There is nothing, at least to my knowledge, that is, has been produced, manufactured, invented, whatever term you want to use, to be able to stop one of someone on the road who is driving high. Now, they can, no matter where they get their pot and marijuana from, they're still driving high. Um, you know, I, I, I maybe I'll call me old fashioned. Yeah, no, I get, I get that. I would just say, you know, that issue I, I honestly think is irrelevant in this discussion because this isn't necessarily going to increase the supply of marijuana in Dennis. This is just going to regulate it so that when people in Dennis who are using it are, bu are potentially buying it from yep. a store in Dennis, that's going to see the, the tax benefit. I don't think we're going to get more marijuana users all of a sudden in Dennis because there's, there's shops online. Um, and if we do, I don't think those are the type of people that are going to be smoking and, and driving. I just don't. But um, so, yeah, I don't really see that as an issue, per se, because this isn't going to, again, this isn't bringing this whole thing of we don't want to bring marijuana into Dennis. It is here. It, I can promise you, as Paul noted, I, I, you know, you can smell it. It's here. So we just we, we want to regulate it and, and, and be able to tax it so that, yeah. Yeah, I, I've kind of said my piece. But so, yeah. you mentioned, so you mentioned that you, you think it's irrelevant. It may be irrelevant to you, but I'm here to tell you, pal, it's not irrelevant to me. I don't mean it's an irrelevant yeah. issue. Let I me mean, finish, please. Yes. Okay, Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry you got offended. I didn't mean to offend you. Let me finish, please. Yes. It's not irrelevant to me. Okay? And I know what goes on in our school system. And I know that these kids walk in those halls selling pot and you may not think it's a gateway drug but i've been on this planet a couple more years longer than you you can't look at me sir when you when i'm talking to you you can you think that do you think this is funny you think this is funny i think this is funny what is going on so why are you why are you treating me why are you standing up and yelling at me right now because you won't give me the satisfactory of looking at me when i'm talking to you yes i'm looking at you sir yes I can see I've angered you. I apologize. I, I did not mean to offend you. Can I clarify my remarks? I'm done. Okay. What I, can, I, can I clarify my remarks? Just sure, for the record. Go ahead. I did not mean that the issue is irrelevant in, to, in totality. I meant in terms of this petition. That is not going to change that issue. You, your, your point about people dealing drugs in school, I don't doubt that. So let's regulate it and let's take the market power away from the black market so that it's regulated. I'm sorry I offended you, sir. I did not mean to. Not a problem. I, I, I want to apologize to everyone here this evening. I apologize for, uh, for raising my voice. I apologize to you, sir, um, for um, um, obviously it's you, you, you can see where I'm coming from you know, with this. And, uh, and again, I, I hope I haven't embarrassed anybody on this board, nor have I any embarrassed our administration, you know, with this. Um, I think all the reasons Mr. Plath brought up is why it's a good idea to send it to the planning board so we could try to work through some of these issues. And I can, you know, if there are issues that are outlined like the town council did, I can, we can amend from town meeting floor. Uh, I don't see why you wouldn't go to the planning board and at least hear what they have to say. On the matter, I don't understand what that harms. Um, I think that's the proper process. It's a zoning article. That's what it's supposed to go through. I think by sending it to the planning board mm -hmm. and then having the planning board give a recommendation, it gives the impression that there's actually been some thorough level of vetting of this before Maytown meeting. And Jim has already outlined some of the information that we don't have. I have not reviewed this information from council that you say we have. I'd love to look at that as well. So again, I, I'm not in favor of supporting it. At, it's very frustrating as a citizen petitioner because the process is that the town won't help me while I'm crafting it. I get it. Uh, it's a citizen's petition. And then I turn it in, and it's like, well, we're not going to put it to the planning board, and we can't help you, and it's a citizen petition. So I'm just 
it's a set up, I feel like I'm kind of set up to fail here. If you guys don't want to do it, then fine. Um, but it's been a frustrating process. Yeah, but it will appear. So we have a motion and a second. All those, and this is to, to not support the article. Support. So that's a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'm one opposed. Thank you. $300,000 has been awarded to five Cape Cod towns to address nitrogen pollution in our waters. The Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection awarded these funds to Mashpee, Yarmouth, Dennis, Brewster, and Chatham to, quote, help our towns develop comprehensive plans that allow communities to comply with new regulations, move away from reliance on septic systems, and stem nutrient pollution in our fragile environment, end quote. State Senator Julian Sear said that quote on Tuesday. Chatham was awarded $67,400 to support the Pleasant Bay Alliance to file watershed permits for various areas and to evaluate flows and nitrogen removal needs. Dennis will use their $50,000 to conduct a hydrogeologic evaluation for its phase one wastewater program. Yarmouth will also use part of their $70,000 in funding to conduct hydrogeologic evaluations to support their groundwater discharge permit. Amidst a dire blood shortage on Cape, the Barnstable Police Department is hosting a blood drive in Hyannis on Friday, April 5th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Hospitals perform more than 8,500 transfusions each year, and one in 10 people entering a hospital need blood. Every pint of blood donated to Cape Cod Healthcare stays on Cape Cod to serve your community and save the lives of friends, neighbors, and family. Cape Cod Healthcare urges those who can donate to head to capecodhealth.org to make an appointment. Plans for the future of the Hyannis Inn at 473 Main Street were brought to the Hyannis Historic Waterfront District Commission last Wednesday following the November approval to alter the property. The new plans call for the demolition of some of the motel buildings towards the back of the property and the addition of a four-story retail and residential building in the front of the property facing Main Street. This new building would add 47 studio and one-bedroom units above retail spaces on the first floor, while three of the existing buildings on the property would remain hotel units. Commissioners expressed concern that the new building lacks a historical look and will be too tall compared to the surrounding buildings. The discussion and potential vote on this development will continue at their next meeting on April 17th. Coming up after the break, Dennis's Destination Respite Program. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Cape Media News. I'm Lauren Williamson. With diseases like dementia and Alzheimer's on the rise, more and more people are having to become caregivers for their loved ones. A newer program at the Dennis Center for Active Living aims to help alleviate some of the stress of being a caregiver with a program called Destination Respite. <laughs> The Destination Respite came, uh, is an idea that came out of just discussions with other colleagues. Uh, we as gerontologists or social workers are constantly working. So we know that dementia is like a high level uh, issue right now. It's increasing. Uh, the centers are getting more and more calls uh, for folks that are either wandering or families that are having difficulty supervising or caring for their loved ones with early memory loss or cognitive impairment. So Destination Respite is a program that uh, Brenda put together through the Dennis Council on Active Living. And we are one of the participants. Barnstable, uh, the town of Barnstable is involved. I know that there's numerous other towns uh, that have, that are a part of this, you know, this Destination Respite. It attracts people from all over Cape Cod and it gives them an opportunity to take a break from caregiving because we provide free care for the people that are living with cognitive loss. What we provide is a respite. It means uh, a moment of rest 
for the caregivers. Um, taking care of a loved one with cognitive impediment takes a lot, a lot on the caregiver. And our job is to provide care for that person while the caregiver receives other kinds of service, other kinds of service, such as language improvement or social, um, even um, personal care and so on. We have many plans, many scheduled events for the caregivers. And in, in exchange, we are helping the people that suffer from cognitive disorders. I'm a new person. Uh, I was hired in November, and I'm the coordinator for the Latinos, specifically the Brazilian or Portuguese speakers, because we want to offer this um, service to as many people as we can. I would love to see it expand Cape-wide. I'm hoping to test this first. Dr. Molly Perdue uh, from the Alzheimer's Family Support Center is going to work with us to help us set up a, uh, a study so that we can really look at the effectiveness of this, these options for uh, respite. We also have the participation of the Alzheimer's Family Support Center. Right now, they're housed, I know they are in Howard, but I, I work with the one at Cape Cod Mall, where I'm bringing families so that they can be part of the respite program. So the Alzheimer's Family Support Center is a Cape Cod organization that helps people all the way to Plymouth County. So we do a lot of programming um, in this area. We do a lot of programming uh, in partnership with. We're in the Destination Respite Program that, that Brenda you know, has, has orchestrated. So we're bringing people to the Cape Cod Mall that are uh, speaking Portuguese or speaking Spanish that are looking for caregiver education, are looking for free respite opportunities. So that's part of our, our combined program. So we're trying to be creative in the sense of providing social care in the community that really takes the place of healthcare. Because if you can keep folks engaged, happier, they're less prone to get sick, depressed, and isolated. The reality is that a caregiver who is constantly caring for another person's needs and having to care for their own, and you never know what situation there is, there's caregiver stress. That's a real thing. And so we're trying to address it. We're trying to keep caregivers healthier, uh, a little happier uh, with these respite breaks. And science tells us that just that little bit of a break can make all the difference in a person's quality of life. And that's what we're here for. That's our mission. The Yarmouth Fire Department celebrated the retirement of two dedicated firemen this past Wednesday at Station 3. Deputy John Sawyer and Captain Kevin Huck have retired after decades of hard work in the fire service. Deputy John Sawyer was honored for 40 years of service, eight of which were in Yarmouth. And Captain Kevin Huck was honored for his 30 years with the fire department, all of which were spent with the Yarmouth community. Congratulations and happy retirement. Cape Cotter and Pizza Shark owner Josh Koopman stars in a new indie comedy called Early Bird. The film debuted last year at, the mul at multiple film festivals around the country, including the Grand Rapids Film Festival, where it won Best Writing. Koopman took home an award from the San Antonio Film Festival for his performance in the film. The film follows the plight of a theater owner, played by Koopman, desperately trying to reignite his struggling business with inane and outlandish productions. The Milwaukee Film Festival described the story as, quote, a meditation on creative careers and the potential for passion to fizzle out. This film will hit close to home and serve as a glimmer of hope for arts, patrons, and workers alike. For one night only, you can catch Early Bird at the Chatham Morpheum, home to one of Pizza Shark's three location, on April 3rd at 7 p.m. Can't make it? You can also find the film on Amazon Prime, Peacock, and Apple TV. Congratulations to Monomoy Regional High School senior Yu Ying Zhao, who was awarded the 2024 Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents Award for Academic Excellence. This award is given to one high school senior who has distinguished themselves in the pursuit of excellence during their high school career. To select a student for this award, Superintendent Dr. Scott Carpenter looks for an academic success 
as well as qualities of leadership and initiative within the community. A team of counselors and administrators help with the selection process. Along with her academic success, being her class valedictorian and a member of the National Honor Society, Zhao founded the Coding the Future Club, aiming to support young women interested in computer science. The club boosted the sign-up of girls to computer science classes by 400% in just two years. Zhao will continue her education at Harvard in the fall. Coming up after the break, politics. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Cape Media News. For our political updates, here's news director Mitch Sock. My name is Tara Vargas Wallace, and I'm a member of the NAACP and the executive director of Amplify POC. I am here tonight regarding equity. I recently read an op-ed that stated that the laws are made by those who show up. So here I am. I will not be intimidated. I will not be bullied. I have been watching this council and its adversarial approach to housing of all types in our community. As the executive director of Amplified POC, a racial equity organization, I am here together with the NAACP in solidarity as we stand together to move forward with equitable housing in Barnstable. I am respectfully requesting that you delay the vote on this resolution to form these committees until public interviews have been conducted to ensure diversity. At the March 7th Barnstable Town Council meeting, after some concern over anonymous letters that have been circulating through the town, the decision was made to postpone the vote on the establishment of five new ad hoc committees to the March 21st meeting last week. These were a committee to review town council rules and the town code, a committee to review the purpose, composition, functionality, and effectiveness of standing count town committees, a committee to review and assess zoning and review the town's use of regulatory agreements, a committee to assess and recommend strategies for housing creation within the town, and a committee to recommend policy with respect to the town's acquisition and disposition of property and development of town-owned property. Some residents highlighted an apparent conflict of interest in having council president Felicia Penn be the sole counselor to make appointments to these committees, especially housing and zoning, given that she has a we're full bumper sticker on her car, a sticker that echoes a quote used by those who oppose new development. This prompted representatives from the NAACP and Amplify POC, as well as residents, to ask the council to postpone the votes further. Housing is a real issue. Please, as Tara said, we need this ad hoc committees reviewed. They need transparency. People cannot afford to live in Hyannis. They can't afford to live on Cape. You don't have the people here to serve. The tourists come in and they are angry. They have to wait forever. Service was terrible. One person is serving more tables than are necessary. People can't afford to live here. It's going to affect the economy. We need housing. Thank you. I urge all of you tonight to delay the vote or vote no um, on item 166, the resolve establishing certain ad hoc committees. I'm a community organizer and I work in affordable housing. I spend a great deal of time supporting the creation of affordable housing on town owned properties and supporting the bylaw changes necessary to make those plans a reality, as well as helping municipalities build trust with their constituents. Barnstable's form based code has been held up as an example across our county as a success in zoning reform, and it took years to achieve. It speeds up the timeline for housing development and allows us to build the housing we desperately need in a timely manner. This form based code was developed with community engagement, and it does represent the desires of our townspeople. At best, our citizens have fragile trust in their government. The message that this resolve sends is that our voices don't matter because town council has a differing opinion. This puts too much decision-making power into the hands of one person. It's an overstep of town council's function. It's sidestepping boards and committees that have already been long established to handle these tasks. 
My belief is that everyone deserves a right to live here. We are not full. And just so you know, the people that are in the room, we will keep showing up as long as we need to. If it has to be every meeting, I will put it on TikTok. I will make you TikTok viral. Matt Levesque knows how that feels. And I'm sure, Felicia, you do not want that side effect. During council response to the public comment, President Penn explained the process of applying to the committees and allowed a resident to come to the podium to ask questions. Tonight we're voting to establish certain advisory committees. That, that's my understanding. But they won't be populated tonight. They'll be populated. They I will be appointing counselors to be on the committees. Mm -hmm. They're going to do the same process that the public's going to do. They're going to give me their names, tell me what committees they're interested in, and they'll be appointed from that stack. Thank you. The that's public what I will to be sure. doing the same thing, but it's a written application. Right. And okay. when we fill out that application, who decides from that application what people get on that committee? I don't know the answer to that question until we get through this motion tonight. Okay, because that's my concern. That in the past has been what's gone on. People end up picking who they want. And the people that get on that commission, there should be someone from every category, especially people who are struggling. How can people who aren't struggling and people who don't have it. No, we heard you. We heard you okay. loud and clear. I, I don't saying. mean to shut you down. I'm just saying we no, got no, your no, message I, loud I and clear. It, but I want to make Thank sure you. we understand. Yeah, we, we got it. We want to, I just want to. I got it. It's the most open process that any committee in this town's ever had so far. When it came time to discuss and vote on the committees, Councillor Neary proposed an amendment that would send the resident applicants to the appointments committee rather than President Penn having sole discretion to pick the committee members. Councillors debated the issue and asked Councillor Neary for his rationale. But what I'm trying to get around here is really the optic of what's going on now, right? I'm trying to quell this, this uh, tension, maybe? I don't know the right word to use here. And I think that this can be done in a fashion. And I, I, you know, I spoke to the council president. We could have three applicants and it, does it really make a difference if there's, depending on how many, if this goes through, then we pick the three, right? But we could have 30 as well. So if there's 30, I just feel that we have a, a, an appointments committee already established. It's in effect. You task them with it. They decide. The number, the names come up. It, it just, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a way to remove this optic that we've been looking at and listening to for a bit now. Uh, I won't be supporting this amendment, and I think the powers enumerated to pre into the president are done by the code. And I've discussed this earlier about how we've gotten away from the code, the town code, and we need to stick by that. It's actually the town council rules on the this The town issue. council rules. And I think we should stick to the rules that have been in place and been, um, been, been, um, other presidents have used these same rules over the last number of years, and I don't think changing now for a particular reason, I don't understand what the reason is. Um, I understand what, what, what Paul Neary is saying, Councilman Neary, Councilman Neary is saying about the, um, the optics of this, okay? But a lot of, in my opinion, a lot of these optics are, have been created over the last two weeks without people knowing the full story. And... Um, and it's been ginned up in uh, certain respects, is my, in my own opinion. Uh, I think we should stick by the town council rules that every other pro town council president has done in the past. And uh, I don't think we should be setting any precedents depending who's sitting in that position. So that's my, my opinion. The vote was split six to six, so the amendment did not pass. We reached out to all councilors this week to get their comments on why they voted for or against the amendment, especially given the concerns of the public and organizations like the NAACP. Only two councilors responded, Precinct 5 Councilor John Crow and Precinct 10 Councilor Matt Levesque. Councilor Crow, who voted against the amendment, reiterated his response from the meeting, stating, all previous council presidents have enjoyed this power, and I see no reason they should be denied this presidency, recent objections notwithstanding. And in support of the amendment, Councillor Levesque said, I thought it would be best in the spirit of transparency to have more councillors weigh in on the process. All five committees were ultimately approved, with the committee to recommend policy with respect to the town's acquisition and disposition of property and development of town-owned property being changed to a councillor-only committee. 
We reached out to President Penn to see if she had any assurances for the public that the selection process would be transparent, but as of the time of this taping, we have not heard back from her. One Barnstable voter and community organizer, Ella Sanpu, had this to say about the results. The ad hoc committees to review zoning and to recommend housing for strategies have space for Barnstable residents to serve, and I hope these positions will be advertised widely beyond a page on the town's website to ensure they reach a diverse pool of applicants. Systemic problems begin to be solved when the people most affected by them have a seat at the decision-making table. Zoning and housing policy may seem complicated, but they play a defining role in how our communities are designed. It is essential that the communities reviewing zoning and housing reflect the needs of the communities they will directly impact. If you would like to apply for the zoning or housing committee, applications are being accepted through April 19th and can be found on the town council page on the town of Barnstable website or in person at town hall. And that's gonna do it this week. Back to you, Lauren. Thank you for joining us this evening. If you have a story that you would like to see covered, you can always send us an email at newstip at keepmedia.org. Tune in every week for more hyperlocal news that matters on Channel 26, Apple TV, Roku, and Fire TV. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media, including Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. For Cape Media News, I'm Lauren Williamson.